I think the uh, problem that Nelson clearly identifies as a perpetual loss of money by the All-American family um, through the course of their lifetime, and, I mean, it's staggering, and that there is actually a way to take control, to correct that, and take control of the banking function in their life. He clearly demonstrates 34 and a half cents out of every dollar that's going through their hands is going right through their hands to the third party lender. Um, you know, I think he's being very generous. He illustrates also there that the uh, average savings rate, or he's assuming or illustrating a savings rate of 10%, mm -hmm. which um, I think the average savings rate in America today is well below 3%. Yeah, right around two, maybe. And, you know, the big focus in the financial world and in the investment advising, financial advising world is that, you know, we're always concerned about the rate of return on our savings. So while we're losing 34 and a half cents of every dollar that we earn, we're concerned about gaining a small percentage on the little bitty 10% that we may or may not actually be saving. Right. You know, it's a, and no wonder, so no wonder the middle class stays the middle class and the people with the money stay the people with the money. It's as if our eyes not on the ball. We're, we're distracted by what we're told is something we, should that something we should be concerned about, something that we should be worried about, that rate of return on our savings, when in fact the, we are losing so much more than we're gaining on average. And that might come off as something new, maybe something that you've never heard before, but you know, one, I know one really great illustration, and Nelson does mention this in this section, is the housing example with the mortgage. Oh, yeah. If you just look at an amortization table and see how much money is going to the lender just in the finance charging, just in the interest alone, uh, and then consider that, you know, that's all the interest payment is weighted to the front of the term heavily heavily right yeah. so the money most of the money you're paying is going right into the lender's pocket and most people will turn over they'll move they'll <laughs> buy another house sell theirs within five years and so just with the housing alone the, i think the nelson number uses is somewhere in the 80s it's a you know say 85 percent 85 percent of what the average individual pays out will go right to the lender oh, yeah. in the form of profit and so Expand that out to all the other things that we finance, educations, vacations, transportation, you name it. And then when, whenever they refinance, if we refinance to a cash refund, move, whatever it is, that interest becomes perpetual. Yeah. yeah. We'll do it again and again and again. Yeah. Over and over and over and over. Yeah. Well, Nelson, you know, he uses the numbers and the numbers are there. There's a nice graph to you can tell just exactly what he's talking about. But he also uses uh, an example that maybe can get the message across a little easier. Uh, and that's with airplanes and the, and the environment through which an airplane might might fly and how fast. And I've heard you talk about that before. Maybe you wanna tell them about sure. it. Sure, you know, Nelson is, a, is an aviator. He's a pilot, so he uses an airplane as an analogy and does it. It's a, just a great illustration. So he takes an airplane flying north mm -hmm. out of Birmingham, headed towards Chicago at 100 miles an hour, right? Well, he's flying into a headwind of 345 miles an hour. So you think about that, 34 and a half cents out of every dollar is flying away, right? Going right through our hands. And then we're trying to earn 10% or more on the little bit that's left over of the savings, mm -hmm. right? So the airplane flying at 100 miles an hour just represents that 10%. Mm -hmm. The headwind at 345 miles an hour represents the 34 and a half cents out of every dollar going away. So from Chicago or from Birmingham to Chicago, the airplane driver's going to Cuba at <laughs> 245 miles an hour. Yeah. Right? And the best thing that the, the airplane driver could do is land, mm -hmm. let the air mass move over, right? Or, or he could take off and get a tailwind, right? That's 345 miles an hour, and he's flying at 100 miles. He's going to get to Chicago at 445 miles an hour in a hurry, mm -hmm. right? So the financial world uh, doesn't really consider, and most people don't understand that you can actually control the environment in which your money flows through. 
Now, the airplane pilot has to wait. Like you say, you have to land. You have to wait for the air yeah. to be moving in the right direction. But with money, you can actually control the environment in which you're flying, in which you're participating in the broader economy. And he does mention there as well that in finance, everything is compared to what everybody else is doing. Right. And so if you're flying forward at 445 miles an hour and everybody else is flying backward at 245, you know, you're getting where you're going much faster than they're getting That's to where they want to go. That's a 690 mile an hour difference yeah. between you and what everybody else is doing, even though they think they're doing the right thing. Right. All because you chose to fly in the proper environment. That's right. Natural law. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn more about infinite banking, you can watch this video next or visit our website at bankingwithlife.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.